What a day, what a day. Oh my goodness, look at this, y'all. Holy cow, what a day. There he is. How you doing? All right. All right, we are back in beautiful St. Bernard Parish, starting out the day at Hopedale Marina in Hopedale, Louisiana. And we got fish on the brain. We were gonna duck hunt today, but the wind forecast is almost nothing. And that's not great for duck hunting, and it is great for some real calm boat rides and hopefully for some fishing. The target species today, believe it or not, is the sheep's head. That's who we want to go after today. So we're going to go in here. We're going to get some dead shrimp and get out there and explore the beautiful marsh here in St. Bernard Parish. There it is. Hopedale Marina. Address will be in the description. Wow, look at this place. Holy cow. All the more she need. Check that out. This place is yeah, right going on. <laughs> All right, I want to reintroduce a good friend of mine. This is my buddy, Captain Randall Shaw. And uh, we're cheating a little bit today. You know, normally I come and it's do-it-yourself trips, but I'm actually here with Captain Randall, who's one of our charter captains here in St. Bernard. So he spends tons of time on the water. We're both very passionate about fishing in St. Bernard. Uh, tell us what you're expecting today, brother. You know, I haven't fished in a while, so I've been in Florida a little bit, and uh, it's winter time, but we're gonna start at the jetties and see what we can do. I mean, we got light, light winds today. We got like three, four mile an hour winds, right. so we're just gonna kinda start, start, start at the jetties and see where it goes. And that's one thing we haven't talked a lot about in this series promoting St. Bernard. You don't always have to bring your own boat and, and figure out the fish yourself. You can book with a charter captain like Captain Randall, Louisiana Fishing Charters, look him up. But man, it's a beautiful day. Let's go find these fish. We got our boxed up shrimp, frozen. Should I put water on these to thaw them out so? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Put a little water in the bucket, maybe. Can't throw a little, just a little water in the bucket. Alright, so we got some water in our bucket. We'll just throw some shrimp in the bucket to get them thawed out. Alright, how are we rigging up today, Captain? So, today I got one already right here. It's gonna be you. I'm gonna start with the uh, the typical Louisiana catching rig, basically. Uh -huh. Popping cork, 20 pound fluorocarbon, about two foot and a quarter ounce jig head. With a little dead shrimp and uh, see what we can find. And once we find them, then we'll go from there what we're gonna do. That's the finding machine right there. Got him? All right, y'all, first fish. It is. It's pulling, huh? It's pulling. Got some pull to it. I don't know what this is. I see white. All I see is white. Drum? Black drum. Looks like a Black Yeah, drum. it's a drum. Nice drum. Perfectly sized drum. Mm -hmm. Come right in. Yes, sir. Deep size right there. Good job, bro. Hey, that's where we start the morning. <laughs> First fish of the day. Beautiful yes, day out here. Mm-hmm. Old drum head. Mm -hmm. Alright folks, we are here at the end of the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet in St. Bernard Parish. So the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet is a man-made shipping channel that was dug starting in the 50s, finished in the 60s, and it's actually part of our tragic story in St. Bernard of Hurricane Katrina. This shipping channel was responsible for a lot of the water that came into our parish and flooded 100% of St. Bernard Parish. But here we are almost 20 years later and we're back and we're stronger than ever. Now we still have to live with the Mississippi River Golf Outlet as a waterway. It's no longer open as a shipping channel. See, see that's what it's good for, catching fish like that. But it's an excellent place to come fishing when you come to St. Bernard. 
Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> He's not happy either. That's the ones I like. That's the ones I like to catch that ain't happy about it. God, he's fighting. The drum. Drummy drum. Keep the street going, baby. Yes, indeed. I like a drum there. What? He's great. Look how cool he looks. It's a cool looking fish, man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Got your sheep this time, you think? I might have one. A little bait snapper. Got that twitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah? He's got that pretty, pretty stripes of convict. Oh, man, look at him. <laughs> this sheep head right there. Got him. Got him. Keep the date. Ooh, that's a nice one, buddy. That's earth sheep right there. Huh? Yeah. You got a net? One a net? Yeah. Where's it at? That front box right there on that side. Probably should have got the net out early. Huh? I know. Yeah, I got you. Should have been more confident, right? Feisty. I can see. There he is. Wake up. Nice big sheep's ass. That's a big one, dude. <laughs> That's how we start it. Bend some rods. Cool. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. 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 Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, my lord. That's probably another bull there. That's feeling bully. Oh, my lord. Yeah, that, that ain't no drum. Oh, yes. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Gotta feel that pull. Ah, he's giving up fast. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I misdiagnosed. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. He heard me talking bad about him. Uh, no, it's a drum. It is a drum. Pretty black drum, though. Yeah. All right. Yes, indeed, y'all. Man, what a trip, huh? What a trip. Ed? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say he's a bull bull, but he ain't no little one. Well, I ain't a baby now. <laughs> you know, he's not acting <laughs> like a baby either. All right. First red of the day, y'all. This is why a lot of people come to St. Bernard. This fish right here, we have an abundance of them. They're so super fun to catch. Really a hard, hard biting fish. Gosh, as y'all can see, I mean, this guy's making me work for it for sure. He ain't giving up yet either, and he wants to go under the boat. I'm a fishy fish. I don't think he's quite ready yet.
Oh, let's see if I get it. Ain't quite ready. Gosh, what a monster fish. Well, he's still hot. <laughs> he's swimming around. Alright, go red, baby. That's a bull. Oh yeah, it's a bull. Yes, yeah, a bull. It's a healthy bull. Yes indeed. <laughs> Alright, y'all. That's why a lot of people come to St. Bernard right here. These big bull reds. This is a perfect place to catch them. What a beautiful, powerful fish, man. Oh, I love these fish so much. And they like those rocks, these rock jetties just as much as the sheep's head and the drum. Uh, this fish is a breeding breeding size. This is, you know, he's got easy access to the gulf to do his thing during the spawn or she. So we're going to put it back and let it go make some more babies for us. There it goes. Man, oh man. I love redfish, y'all. That's why you come to St. Bernard's. Because you got plenty of fish to eat already. You saw it. We got the sheeps. We got the drum. We good on meat. We're good on food. Then you still get to sport fish for big redfish. St. Bernard's got it all, y'all. All right, y'all. That's about all I can catch. My arms are tired. Shout out to Captain Randall Shaw with the Louisiana Fishing Charters. Look him up. If you want to come to St. Bernard and fish with him, highly, highly recommended. A good old friend of mine. Y'all will love fishing with him because he can put you on stuff like this. Now I think it's time to see one of our beautiful St. Bernard restaurants and what they can do with this. All right, y'all, I'm here at Araby Food Store in Araby, Louisiana, which is a part of St. Bernard Parish. And this is an icon of a place. It is almost 100 years that this place has been in business. They've been through everything, you name it, hurricanes, ups and downs of the economy, still here, still rocking and rolling, and still one of the absolute best places to get a bite to eat here in St. Bernard. I got my fish with me, and the owner, Max Landry, is gonna cook it up into a po' boy, and I hear he's got some beautiful St. Bernard shrimp to put on the side. Let's go check them out. Today, my name is Max Landry from the Araby Food Store. Today, we're gonna cook some fresh fish caught in St. Bernard by uh, Jared Serenay. You know, we're gonna start by just cleaning the fish and prepping it, making it bite-sized pieces that are, that are good to eat. I'm gonna trim off any part of the fish that's just not desirable. Nice, clean, clean final product. All right. Okay, now the first step we wanna take after we've got the fish clean is we wanna make a nice dredge, an egg wash, Come through with a flour dread. Like to make sure get a lot of that egg wash as much as it off as much of it off as you can. And that's just gonna help that meat, fleshy part of that fish really pick up those ingredients in that flour. Now, is there a special flour you use? Particular um, seasoning, particular no, mix? No, we we use a homemade in-house flour mix here. It's a uh, corn flour, uh, white flour, and, and of course, you know, some seasonings. Next, we're going to come to our fryer. Make sure your grease is at 350 degrees. It's the optimal frying temperature. Make sure that grease is good and up to temperature first. You don't want it dropping back down too far, and you don't want to put too much product in at once, and we're just going to drop that in and let it go until it's a nice golden brown. Everyone knows at Araby Food Store we're all about fresh Louisiana products, specifically St. Bernard products. And so what we have here is some fresh St. Bernard shrimp caught in Lake Bourne by St. Bernard fishermen. Uh, they're peeled and deveined, 26, 30 count shrimp. And we're just going to put them on side of this fresh fish pillboy that we're making just to accent it with a little, little fresh flavor. So we've taken our fish and shrimp out of the grease. It's, uh, it's cooked all the way through. It's a nice golden brown. We've gone ahead and, and dressed our po'boy bread, Lodheimer po'boy bread, bread with mayonnaise, blue plate mayonnaise. We've got lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles that's dressed in New Orleans, and that's how we're doing it today. Um, we're going to take our fish, put it on there. We're just going to set a couple shrimp right on side of it. And so we have a full seafood dinner here on the Friday. Oh, man. 
Alright, now y'all probably watch me enough to know I'm not a picky eater, so when you order something dressed, that's what you get. You get all the goodness. You get the lettuce, you get the tomatoes, you get the pickles. You're gonna get mayonnaise, so if you don't want it dressed all the way, you gotta let them know. But if you really wanna appreciate it for what it is, get your po' boy dressed. Alright, let's see what them old sheep's head got. Yo, oh my goodness. I'll be honest, there's nowhere else in the world other than St. Bernard that this could have happened. To go out there, to fish that rock jetty, catch all the fish we caught, come back, have someone like Max cook it up. It's an amazing place to be. Now we gotta see how them beautiful St. Bernard shrimp fare. They got it figured out here in the Arby Food Store, I'm gonna tell you. So if you wanna see where everything is, Go below the video, there's a description. I've got addresses to all the places that we went today. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. I'll try to help you out best I can. We really want you to come down here to St. Bernard and see what we have to offer. Get you some of that, and we'll see y'all soon. Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees, where the levees end, the fun begins. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm fishing with some buddies in beautiful St. Bernard Parish. I'll be showing you all the places to stop on your trip here. Then we're taking the fish to one of our amazing local restaurants so they can cook them up. Now let's get it started. All right, y'all, it is another beautiful day in St. Bernard Parish. And we are going inshore fishing for speckled trout and redfish today. I'm actually on my way down to Delacro, but before I get there, I'm stopping here in Violet at Day and Night Discount. This is probably one of the best places to stop when you're heading down to go fishing in St. Bernard. It's a great place to fuel up. I'm gonna show you how much room they have to get in here with your boat. If you bring your own boat down to go fishing, this is a great place to stop for fuel. All right, so the reason I love coming here to fuel up my boat, you can see there's an Airstream there. So as you're coming down this highway, you turn in here, right? And if you're pulling a trailer, you need a lot of room, right? Well, heck man, look how much room they got to when you're pulling. So you come in with your trailer and your boat, and you've got so much room to pull in and then all this stuff you know this this place is designed with boats in mind i mean look there's a big old airstream down there and let's go inside and get what we need outboard oil if you need that if you do happen to forget anything for fishing they do have some fishing stuff it's not as stocked as it could be but they've got some swivels here lots of line lots of weights i think i'm gonna go old school man just something about a sparkle beetle. That's just a fun old school. This is the most old school bait on the planet for catching speckled trout. And I think I'm gonna get some. You can come in here and order a breakfast sandwich. Tell us what, what, what are some of the things you can get for breakfast here? Uh -huh. Biscuit, croissant, toast, or um, pancake combo omelet, or uh, breakfast, breakfast cup, breakfast combo, which is great. And y'all could whip it up pretty quick if some folks are coming here to go fishing. Yeah, yes sir. It's like five minutes for like a for a cup of sandwich. It's easy. It's quick. We do it very quick. Oh my goodness. Oh, what you got back here, my boy? Oh my goodness. Oh. Alright brother, thank y'all. Appreciate it. See y'all next time. Yes, sir. <laughs> telling you man i love st bernard just stuff like that seeing my partner on the way down to go fishing running his oyster truck y'all gotta come see this culture this way we live y'all come come visit us All right, so we launched right here at Sweetwater Marina. If you Google that, we'll have all the information for you in the description below. That's a great little boat launch when you're looking to fish anywhere around Delacro Regio. It's called Sweetwater Marina. We're in a little bit of a hurry. Steven had to drop off the kids. I had to help my kids get dressed. So now we are fired up, ready to go fishing. That's Sweetwater right there. So we're leaving out and we're going to find these trout right away. No time to mess around. We'll see y'all out there.
<laughs> All right. First keeper. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, y'all. So that's the first keeper of our target species, what we call a speckled trout. What we're doing today is a very classic Louisiana style of fishing. We're fishing with popping corks. We've got some live shrimp. I've got that old sparkle beetle. We're fishing these outer coastal bays, you know, kind of in between, uh, I guess, Delacro and the Gulf of Mexico. Great time of year to be doing this. Really, you could really fish out here any time of year and catch fish. I mean, it's, you know, there's always bait out here. There's always fish. But what we're trying to capitalize on is this kind of movement of shrimp from the Gulf into the coastal waters. So let's see if they here. We just got our first keeper. It's a little slow, but we're hanging in there. Got one in the back here. I'm fighting. I got a bite on, though. I'm getting bit while I'm looking at him. All you got to do is look away. See, like I'm looking at mine now, I ain't getting no bite. I'm going to look back at him. All right, y'all. I hadn't caught a fish in a minute that was not saltwater catfish. Please don't let this be one. It is not. It's a good old head shaker. <laughs> you are so screwed, dude. <laughs> you are so screwed. If you had spots... You'd be going home, partner. Not today. Come on, shaker. Come on, shaker. All right. All right. I'm the white trout killer today, boy. Oh, there you go. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. Sparkle beetle tearing them up, son. Sparkle beetle got their number. Sparkle beetle. <laughs> nice one. That is a nice one. Heck yeah. Good speckle trout. Better off not eating. Ooh, ooh. Best one on the day there, boy. You even beat his 13. That might, make the that might go it. like that <laughs> might go like 14 and a half, dude. <laughs> that is hammer time right there, son. He ain't gonna be able to show off his new piercing. <laughs> yes. 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 What you got, bro? The white variety. Yes, sir. All right, so the first thing you need is a medium action spinning rod with a spinning reel. I recommend a 2500. We usually use braid. You don't need anything more than 30 pound braid to put on there. This is the kicker, though. One of these popping corks, we call it. And it's got beads and on the top weights on the bottom so you know when you throw it it falls down and it just makes a lot of noise it's a lot a lot of noise and that sounds like bait so when you come to st bernard fishing you're gonna want a good handful of these all of our stores sell them then i just go with a leader i've got about like three foot leader i think that's uh 20 pound 30 pound fluorocarbon and the old school sparkle beetle that's what i showed y'all this morning that's a quarter ounce jig head you could fish like this anywhere in St. Bernard and catch fish. You just really, really want to find some time when the tide is moving. And that's what happened for us today. We got out here at the end of one tide cycle. We're here at the beginning of another and these fish are just turned on like that, like a light switch. <laughs> oh, sparkle beetles. <laughs> oh, sparkle beetle and whiteies. I love that. Sparkle beetle and whiteies. It is happening, folks. Doing a head shake for us. That's so good. Yes. Dude, the whites are getting bigger. They're getting bigger, dude. Little white guy.
Yo. They on there. Still got him, <laughs> huh? Still got him. Still got him, y'all. Still got him. This is why you come down to St. Bernard Parish, find your little place to stay down here, go launch a Sweetwater Marina, and get on some fish. Alright y'all, I'm back at Sweetwater Marina. We caught the fish. I wanted to show y'all something too. Right here at Sweetwater Marina, you can actually stay here. This is lodging. He's got five rooms elevated up off of the ground. You can park your boat under there and we're gonna go have a look at him. Let's go see. Like I said, we always encourage you to, when you come to St. Bernard, bring your own boat. Come see us, come fishing down here and stay at a place like Sweetwater. I mean, look at this. It don't get no better than that. You park your boat, your truck, everything, leave it hooked up, stay right above it. Park your truck here, launch right there, and go that way to catch the fish that we caught today. They got everything you need here. I'm Captain Jack, the proud owner of Sweetwater Marina. How long y'all been in business? Uh, 16 years down here. Wow. What is your favorite thing about fishing in St. Bernard or being in St. Bernard? Uh, if you have to go back up front, it's close and easy. And I got a lot of great things, good food up there, good stores, you know, but uh, it's the best fishing around. So is St. Bernard a really hard place to fish? Like even if you don't kind of know what you're doing, could you bring your own boat and catch? Yeah, you can easily go out in St. Bernard and have your own boat, get a little tip from me or somebody else with some knowledge. It's and we just spot. have such a big fishery. I mean, there's always something you can catch, right? Redfish, speckled trout, bass, the list goes on and on. Bring your crab traps and catch you an honest to God. 150 quart ice chest in a few hours. A beautiful crab, select crab. You just throw the small ones back and keep these big, beautiful males and the big, pretty females. All you want, it's crazy. All right, y'all, here's the inside of one of the cabins. I mean, come on now, come on, come on. Look, I mean, couldn't you see yourself chilling here, watching the TV after a fishing trip? I mean, everything you need. Got the refrigerator. Oh, he's even got condiments. Come on, bro. You're making it too easy for him. Too easy for him. Nice, clean bathroom. They got the bunks, so you and your partners, you and your buddies can come fishing down here in Delacro. Stay at Sweetwater. Man, y'all got it going on in here, Jack. This is something. I want to come stay in this myself. Yeah, yeah, so you could even sleep more here. This is just phenomenal. Hi, my name's Tommy Tomasio. We have Rocky and Carlos Restaurant. I'm one of the only second generation owners of the restaurant. Actually, it started back in 65. Betsy came in September of 65. That's when I think we became very popular because we fed a lot of people when people didn't have anything at the time. So Rocky and Carlos became very popular at that time. And over the years, we've served a lot of people from all different parishes. We stick with the basics, and we, people that come here, they haven't been here in 10 years, they say, hey, it tastes just like 10 years like ago. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear that. So right now, we're happy where we are. Hopefully, we can make it another 56 years, but I don't think so. But I'm hoping we can do another 10 for sure and try to make the people happy and come back again. It's all good. It's all good. So we're going to do some grilled and some fried. And I'm telling y'all, y'all are in for a treat here at Rocky and Carlos in Chalmette, Louisiana. Really some of our food royalty here in St. Bernard Parish. Can't wait to see it. Y'all just come off the grill. <laughs> I mean, mm, mm, mm. they were just swimming around too. They almost had a chance to get away, but they couldn't.
All right, y'all, this is Miss Amanda's homemade tartar sauce. This ain't no stuff that you can get from Restaurant Depot. She makes it herself. I can't wait to try it. From 1972, so my daddy right, coached all right. that, Mr. John. Remember that, Abe? Oh, my goodness. Mr. Daddy, come on. All right, y'all, I promise this isn't planned, but that just goes to show you those of us who live and work here and promote St. Bernard believe what we're saying. Our parish president just happened to be here. I promise you this is not planned. This is Mr. Guy McGinnis, Mr. Kenny Armstrong. They come here every Saturday. And I walked in, I was like, oh, y'all are here too. So we're, they're going to help me enjoy some of this fish. Cause I mean, I can eat, but I can't eat all this by myself. So we're going to start tasting some of what Miss Amanda cooked up in the kitchen. But once again, if you want to do this, you go catch your fish. You bring your boat down to St. Bernard. You hire a charter captain. Go catch your fish. And then call ahead of time. Let them know you're going to do this. But bring your fish to here at Rocco and Carlo so they can cook it for you. And you can enjoy it like we are right now. So I believe that's, that's the white trout right there. White trout? Yeah. And that's homemade tartar sauce. Man. I've never had homemade tartar really? sauce. Yeah. Never what had. a treat. Unbelievable. All caught in St. Bernard. So you got speckled trout in that? Too? Yeah, there should be some speck and some white all mixed together. All right, y'all, this is the homemade tartar sauce on the white trout. Yeah, highly recommended. The Amanda. veal farm, macaroni, veal so, cutlet, oh. and I got you some gravy from Oh my lord, oh my lord. Gastic veal cutlet as the world famous Rocky and Carlos macaroni. Go Parmesan. <laughs> One. I can't have Rockies without a glass bottle of Rizzo. <laughs> Alright y'all, so now moving on to the grilled fish. I expect it to be phenomenal. Oh my god. Really I might like that better, honestly. Mm -hmm. By itself, that looks pretty good, right? Looks like a pretty good meal. But to really bring it all together, this is how we do. We go with gravy. So brown gravy. And once again, by itself, that looks pretty good. But to do it the Rocky and Carlos way, you go gravy on the mac. <laughs> Look at that, y'all. All right, here's the veal cutlet with the gravy and the macaroni. Y'all, I really don't know what else to say to get y'all to come down here. I mean, if this isn't doing it for you, I don't know what else to say. All right, y'all, and then last, but certainly never least, the veal parmesan. Once again, going back to the gravy. <laughs> All right, this is my number one favorite when I come to Rocky and Carlos. The veal parmesan with the macaroni, the gravy, the gravy. Mm. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. All right, so now if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that now, like the video, leave us a comment, let us know. How did you like this trip? What do you think about coming down to St. Bernard? We'd love to have you. So leave me a comment, let me know. We'll see y'all next time. Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees, where the levees end, the fun begins. I'm Jared Serenade, and today I'm fishing for redfish down at St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana. We stopped at the boat launch to pick up some special bait that we thought would increase our chances for success. Then I took the fish over to Cafe Aquarius, where they cooked up an amazing blackened redfish dish. Now let's get it started. All right, folks, we are back in beautiful St. Bernard Parish today. It's like a spring day. It's, we're in the middle of December, but it's like 75 sunny. I got shorts on. And I'm starting the trip here at South Lake Foods in St. Bernard, Louisiana. This is a great place if you bring your own boat to come fish in here to go ahead and fuel up like I'm doing there. And then come in, get your snacks, get your lunch, all out of the store. Let's go check it out. Oh my goodness, look who they got. Look who's in here. Here comes trouble. Old hot rod. That's what you, when you walk in, you see Hot Rod hanging out here on the rack. Let's see if we got his fish fry. Yep, there's Hot Rod's fish fry. So I didn't pack a lunch, I didn't really have time. I wanna see what they got to eat here. Ooh, I see food. There we go. Definitely want a hamburger. 
nice and warm. They got boudin. Check that out, bro. I mean, That's what I'm getting. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't, can't not get some boudin. Lots of ice. That's what you want to see. When you come to a place before your fishing trip, this is crucial. Got to have ice. One ice for fish. I'm gonna get one for drinks. That's a little, uh, that's not even a 10, that's a seven pounder. All right, when you come, this is the ice you wanna get, Kale ice, but are you really a dad if you don't like, just oh, like overly crush the ice? Gotta crush that ice, baby. Goodness. And then you know how to throw them out there to get them. Hey, bro, that's a good bait. That's a beautiful bait, huh? Hey, that's my favorite thing. I'll be honest. Like, I like keeping extra bait shrimp to eat after the trip. You got to do it. You got to do it. It goes with the fish. It goes with the fish. That's right. Are the shrimp really hard to find right now? Getting there. Getting hard to find, yeah, huh? They're moving further and further out. All right, let's see what we got in here. That's some redfish and catching son of a guns right there. That is a cockahole minnow. Now, how did it get the name like that? I don't know. <laughs> Before my time, for sure. Yeah. You think you can catch a fish with the little fish? Yeah, if I can't catch a fish with that, I'm doing something wrong, huh? <laughs> That's awesome, man. I cannot wait to fish with those. All okay. right, so we got the live minnows. Looks like my shrimp's all gonna go into the fried rice. I'm gonna really try to save this for last. Y'all make so sure I can you make... don't put a minute in the fried rice. Right, right, right. <laughs> there he is on the door. Represent. It's like literally a spring day. Like 75, probably gonna get to 80 degrees today. There he goes, Frank. There he goes, Frank. Come on. That might be the middle himself, boy. <laughs> hey, oh, is he on? Yeah, he's on. Yeah, he's on. Yeah, you're right, Frank. Yeah, you're right, baby. Woohoo! There he went, y'all. Oh, That's what we needed, baby. That's what we needed, Frank. The day has begun, y'all. Yes, sir. St. Bernard's finest. <laughs> All right, maybe they're here, Frank. Maybe they're here. Wow, folks. First fish of the day. He uh, took one of those cockaho minnows. We found a little shoreline here with some grass on it we like. And I'm going to get him in the box, see if we get some more. Beautiful trout. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Frank. Put your bad self. Hmm. Thomas goes in the lake going. I know. That's... Oh, oh, there you go. There we go. Got one, y'all. That might be a green trout. Might be a green trout. Or is it a... It is a green trout. Ooh. It is a little greeny. How about that? Perfect Pretty little bass. He's a little small. We've got a big enough redfish, so I'm going to put him back. So one of the things that happens when we don't have a lot of wind here in St. Bernard is we get these little gnats that want to get all over your body and make you itch and aggravate you. I'm going to show you all a little secret, Victoria's secret. This is called the Amber Romance. This is a, a lady's perfume spray, but somehow, some way, we figured out down here that this is a good thing to repel those gnats. So I'm about to put on some Amber Romance. Don't get any ideas, Frank. This ain't for you. And I'm gonna put this on to get some of them gnats off of me. So definitely pick up some of this. Skin So Soft works well too, but look, I'm picking gnats off, they're on me. So I'm gonna spray down and try to get them off of me. Amber Romance.
Got him, Frank? What you got? Got him. What do you have? What is it? Oh, a nice little red fish. Yes, yep. sir. Get him, get him in. Get him got in. Got him. Yeah. <laughs> got him. St. Bernard's finest. Uh-oh. Frank got one, y'all. Got on another one. Frank got one. Woo-hoo. Good little, good little fish, boy. Get him, Frank. I like it. Get him in here, Frank. I like it. Don't lose him. Don't lose him. <laughs> And we're showing you right here, you can come to St. Bernard and catch fish, even if you don't have a great fishing report. Definitely spend a couple days. It may take you a couple days to figure out the bite, figure out what the fish want, figure out where you want to fish. But here we are, we're putting the pattern together. It's been, you know, kind of slow all day, but here in the afternoon, we're starting to get some bites now. Oh, there he is. <laughs> we got him, y'all. Oh, hey, I looked away. I did the classic look away, and he bit soon as I looked away, y'all. <laughs> yes, we found a bite. A red fish. Awesome little red fish. I love it, y'all. So much fun. That's a good fish, bro. Yeah. How's that feel, bro? St. Bernard. <laughs> there he is. Cool. Man, what have you got there, my friend? It's a hammer. Yeah. Really? Come on. He's running from the boat now. <laughs> Come on, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Lee, what did you catch? How you like that? Bruh. And a lot came loose. <laughs>Cafe Aquarius along with my husband Doyle and I'm going to make today for you our healthy version of um, a, a mock shoe with black and red fish and a mango salsa. So what we try to do here is a healthier alternative. We do have foods that are not necessarily healthy but we're taking the freshest ingredients and turning them into something that's keto friendly, whole 30 friendly, good for your body, good for your soul. That's what we're trying. So we're going to start off by doing um, some avocado oil in the pan, which is a healthy, healthy oil, as opposed to just a regular, you know, vegetable oil. Um, so we're gonna start off with some bacon. Um, now I use a uh, Whole30 approved bacon. It is nitrate free and it has no sugar, along with um, green peppers and red peppers um, and some red onions. And we're just gonna cook that down and let it kinda Caramelized. She's cooking it with the redfish that I caught. Now, normally when you get it here, it's cooked with catfish, which y'all know I'm a big catfish fan. But she's doing this just for me, because I'm special. No, really, uh. He is special. <laughs> but yeah, so when y'all come to get it, ask for the black and catfish, okay? Don't ask for the black and redfish, ask for the black and catfish. So everything's basically cooked in here now. We're gonna add some chicken broth. And for whole 30, we use bone broth. Okay, so we reduce this by about half and then we're gonna throw in a couple of bay leaves and we're gonna throw in coconut milk. Mm. Now you can use heavy cream. It's gonna work the same, but this is the healthy version. And you, believe it or not, you would think, oh my gosh, that's a lot of coconut milk. It doesn't, it takes on the flavor of the bacon and, and all of the other good, delicious ingredients in here. And you see it's coming together like a cream. I roasted ahead of time butternut squash. You salt, pepper, olive oil in the oven, let it go for a good long time because you want it nice and soft, almost mushy. And then you're going in here with it. You're gonna fold it in and you've got this amazing 
butter and bok shu and it's healthy, you don't feel guilty eating it. I'm just gonna let it cook down for a couple minutes and it's gonna absorb all of that and this will be the base for the plate to put the redfish, black and redfish, on top of. Hi, my name is Doyle DeForest with uh, Cafe Aquarius. My wife and I own this restaurant. We've been serving the parish for six years now and we love what we do. Uh, we're about to uh, season up some blackened um, redfish. I have uh, some homemade blackened seasoning and uh, it just basically consists of uh, salt, pepper, black pepper, garlic powder, some paprika. So we're gonna take our seasoned blackened redfish and we're gonna lay them into oil itself. Gonna put this mock shoe at the base of the plate. And to finish it off, I've got mango salsa. So fresh mango pieces, red onion, red bell pepper, some cilantro, salt, pepper, lime juice, and that's it. Man, it smells good. Now, one more thing about Cafe Aquarius. As I mentioned, this will be one of your healthiest options for a place to eat while you're down here at St. Bernard. They also have an in-house bookstore. And guess what I saw? This book right here, someone recently was telling me what a great book this is. Leave me a comment. If you read this book, let me know what you liked about it. What should be some of my takeaways from this book? Because I'm gonna go ahead and get it and read it since they have a bookstore here. All right, now I'll be honest, one of the main things that pulled me here to Cafe Aquarius was their gumbo. They got a gumbo that is full of soul. And the reason is, he cooks an eight hour roux in the oven. So the roux has all that time to really figure out who it is, to get nice and dark. And that's how they make this beautiful, beautiful gumbo that they have here. So when you come, you can get you a healthy option, but also at least get you a little cup of gumbo. Oh, it's so perfect. It's so perfect. I love it. All right, now let's move on to that red fish. I'm getting everything in here, the mock shoe, the mango salsa, and the black and red fish. I mean, when it all comes together like this, you shouldn't have very many complaints in life. All right, so we gave you one more reason to come visit St. Bernard. Go to that website, visitstbernard.com. Start planning out your trip. If you have any questions, comment on this video. I'm going to help you. I want you to come here. We all want you to come down to St. Bernard. So ask us some questions. Go ahead and book your trip. Get it ready. And as far as the channel, you know what to do. Click the like button. Leave me some comments because I need them. And subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you all soon. All right, y'all, we are live and direct from South Louisiana. We are in some brackish water grass ponds this morning, and we have brought our fishing bows with us. And the idea is that we're gonna hunt for catfish. We're gonna hunt for alligator garfish in these shallow water ponds where we could see, where the water's clear enough to, to visibly see the fish, shoot them with a the bow. We work in a trolling motor kind of real quiet and slow and just hoping we come up on them. We know this area is holding fish. It's just a matter of, you know, what spots have them and how many are in that particular school we find. We're not finding anything bigger than schools of about five right now, five, six at a time, but we're seeing quite a few fish. All right, let's work back into the grass. Turn it this way, let me check this thing. There's a little one. Oh, there's a little one. You see him down there? Yep, that little oh. one. Oh, oh, there he goes, okay. Hold on, hold on. I'll get a big one. All right, three. That That's little a, bass, little brown. There's a lot, a lot of... There's normally like when you see other right fish. There. You see him back there, guys? Yep, I see his head. Not too far past him. Oh, right there. Yeah. Oh, you were right over him, dude. <laughs> so close, bro. Oh, here's another one right here, right here, right here, right here, right here in front. No, he's right there. Dang, they're all in here, guys. Oh, another one. They're just coming out of nowhere. Come up here, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. See him? See him, Jackson? Lower, lower, lower. lower. No. All right, give it to him. Oh, oh no. right over his head. Oh, Dude, man. Changing directions, you little turd booties. We in them, no boys. Come out the back side or you could slip out this side. Right there, big one, Jackson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh! 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 
Yeah. You see him? Mm -mm. Oh, there went one. That ain't the same one, though. <laughs> he didn't like that. He didn't oh, yeah. agree. That's a big one. He didn't agree with that. Good catch. There you go, bruh. On the board. Oh, man. You were close, Jackson. I was real close. <laughs> Hold on. You don't have to shoot. Because I can't. Oh, oh well. just passed him. There he goes, Jackson. Look, he's coming across. Let's see. Oh, he turned and went in the grass. Oh, another, another one. There's two of them right there. He's sitting right there. See him? Where? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Find him first. Sitting right here. Uh, oh, one right here, right here, right here, right here. Come on, come on. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get him. Yeah. Oh, you missed that, bro. Did you deflect off of his head? I don't know what I did just there. Did you ricochet off his yeah, head? I have no answer replay on that. Golly. All right, we in him, though, boys. The, the furry animal for too long. Bash you. Mm -hmm. Two nice oh. ones. See? Oh, that's a big one, Jackson. You seen the hole in his head? Uh-huh, little right in front. Shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> They're telling me. That's one in the front right there. Right here, Jackson. See him? Stay ready, guys. I think Stay he's shooting here. a little to the left, too. Oh, yeah, this is much cleaner water. With crabs. One. Two. Yeah, they're going to have redfish in here. Four. There's crabs everywhere. I see a nice big crab right here. Redfish will show up for that. Right. Oh, <laughs> That's a giant. <laughs> Let him shoot. Oh, come on. Somebody's got to shoot. He's about to take off. There we go, Jackson. On the front. Right there. Oh, right over. <laughs> nice crab. Surrounded by brim. Yeah, that crab awesome. that crab is surrounded by brim. Look at the brim. Look at the big giant school of brim. Can I shoot him? Shoot. Just above him. Right behind him. Alright, Tyler, I think I'm ready to shoot a little bit. Gosh. Look at the brim. That's crazy. That's insane. You can actually come back in perfect. We had a handful in here a couple oh, days back. He got it. <laughs> he got it. Oh well, we switched tactics. You know, sometimes it'd be like that. <laughs> oh, another one, Jackson. Out the back. Sometimes it'd just be like that, folks. That's what I'm talking about. Ain't always about how you want to get them. Oh, yeah. Got a net in here, Jay? No, I got my little grabbers though. Take that drag just in here. He might have one with him, Jackson, so be ready. He might have one of his buddies. Oh, that's a nice one. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, a little spoon action. You want me to open the box? Oh! Right, one more. Go up. One. Hey, in the box. There we go. All right. Well, sometimes it'd be like that, folks. We knew they were red. Luckily, I had that spoon ready. All right. Got my man Jackson here. Tell him what's up, Jackson. What's up? And Tyler. What's going on? Tyler's the one found these. Oh, big old red. Oh, bro, you almost got that red fish. You were so close to getting that red. That's what we were looking for. Dude, I thought you were going to smoke him. That was a good shot, actually. This is I'm getting the hang of it though. I yeah. Just saw that one. Bro, you were so close to that redfish. Good eye. Because <gasps> it's catfish, 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 right? Here. <laughs> right over him. I mean like it couldn't have been. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you didn't get him. And both. <laughs> as many fish I shot at it with um And we are not hitting as many as you would think. <laughs> There's something right here, guys. I just seen it going. Wow. 
this is hard it's hard stuff you're shooting with a refraction uh you know you're compensating for the refraction of the light and the water so it's it's not an easy thing to just shoot and, and, and hit them every time i thought it was gonna be a lot easier than this <laughs> really gotcha. ain't. you know what we need what a gig i <laughs> uh, know gold, gold school so, there's one right here laid up in that grass mud everywhere guys see so when we say mud this was fish here we, you know we scared those fish those fish got since we we're here and they took off and left some mud behind that's not a big one let's act and watch the one Oh, that's a gold. Oh, I see, I see, I see the arrow shaking. I yep. see it shaking. Come on. Wow. How about that? That's that's a bonus species today. We did not expect to be shooting these, but guess what? They here. We got them. All right, Jackson, we're going to pay attention here. So if you're wondering why we're shooting catfish and redfish and garfish in the same pond, that's just a very common thing here in South Louisiana. We're on the Mississippi River Delta, so that Mississippi River water comes, comes through our bayous, through our sets of locks and, and what have you. It mixes in with the Gulf of Mexico water, and it's been doing that for thousands of years, and that's why we have this diverse fishery we have. We're also seeing brim. We're seeing blue crabs, bass. It's just all in here. Damn, a lot of stuff. Rig back up. Right there, right there, Jackson. Oh, big right. one. Oh. No! Oh! Coming around again. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Oh! <laughs> I need another arrow in him. Yeah? yeah him you think? Yeah, I don't have Alright, let me. Uh, crap. Alright. Uh, here. Jackson, go shoot this fish. <laughs> we'll bring him around. Dude, yeah, that's a freaking hammer. Yeah, I'll be a 20, 30 pounds. Hey, I could try to get this hook in him. I don't know if this hook will go in him or not. Come get him. Hold up. Hold on. There you go. He's double stuck now. Ain't no getting away now, partner. Step away. Guess I'm gonna open the box. I'm gonna straight in it. All right. Put that back. Woo! That's a big one. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we got all of that. That was awesome. That was a tank. That was actually the biggest one we've seen today. He came right across the front and Tyler just drilled him. That's awesome. So fun, man. This is just one of those awesome things you get to do. Life is good. No complaints for sure. I don't think he did. He's right here. He's right here. He's, cir he's circling back. He's right there. I see him. Are ready? Not too see often him. we get another, another shot. Him. Him. They don't really end just yet, Dad. You see him still? I just see him. Did he run? Right there, Dad. Right there. In the deep. Right oh, nice shot. I told you he was right there. Yes, indeed. What we got? All right, bro. Shooting blue cats out here on the bayou. You got a little bit of everything, y'all. Yep. <laughs> How fun is that, dude? That's so silly. That's he so sat there and let us get another shot at him. I know. All right, I got them redfish cleaned up, and here they are. We call this on the half shell. 
And what I mean by that is we leave the skin and scales on so that you're able to lay it down and cook it like that. All of your seasonings and butters and oils, and whatever it is you use, it all stays within that little shell of the fish. So what I'm gonna make, I'm doing to go with like your typical like spaghetti night, okay? So let's say you go fishing uh, on the weekend and on by Tuesday, you're ready to have spaghetti that night. So we're figuring out how to make the flavors of this fit with that particular style of dish. All right, so what I'm gonna do is an Italian redfish au gratin. To do that, you're gonna need some butter, some Parmesan cheese, some Italian breadcrumbs, of course your fish, and then some seasonings. I've also got my oven preheated to 400 degrees and let's get right into it. First things first, let's go ahead and get this redfish seasoned. I'm going on with some garlic powder first. Followed by some black pepper. And we got Himalayan pink salt to really get that salt popping. Nice and fresh. And into a cup of breadcrumbs, I'm gonna go with a half a stick of butter and a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And we'll go ahead and mix that up. Okay, and I mixed that up for about two minutes. Definitely wanna see so that all your butter is now mixed and stirred and dissolved into your breadcrumbs. Like that. Now we want to layer that on top of our fish. And once it's there, go ahead and hit it with a little bit more butter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lay those into a clean pan. That's what it should look like. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven at 400 and I'll start checking it in about 20 minutes. All right, folks, and there it is. Mm -hmm. And we wanna go ahead and just grate a little bit of fresh Parmesan cheese over that. Mm -hmm. Like so. And then just garnish with a little parsley. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, now I know most of y'all enjoy seeing me cook, seeing what I catch. And one of the ways that you can help keep the channel running is to visit my sponsor, Mossy Oak, and go use that code OTL20 for 20% off of the store on Mossy Oak's website, store.mossyoak.com, OTL20. Let Mossy Oak know that you appreciate their support of Outside the Levees, so we keep bringing this to the fold. Now I got to try it. There's that red fish. Mm. That crust is something else, folks. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. That would make somebody's Italian grandma proud, let me tell you. Served it with a Caesar salad, spaghetti, because you know kids typically like spaghetti. This is a good way to get them to try your redfish. Mm. And you just can't beat a Caesar salad. One of the great salads. Mm. Thanks again for tuning in. I love you. Couldn't do it without you. We'll see y'all next time. So is this a good spot to take off shoes? Unless you want to walk in the sand, get sand in shoes. It's easy to just walk barefoot out. All right, let's give it a try. Whatever you want to do. There we go. All right. You drop your shoe? Oh my goodness, this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna put my shoes by you. One of the few jobs in the world where we have we still we take our kids to work. There it is, folks, the beautiful Emerald Gulf of Mexico. We get down here about once a year. It's nice to be here. Of course, nice to be hanging out with these guys. A lot of work. <laughs>
That's all right, bro. If I'd have brought my boat, we'd be jumping. Ding, ding. Probably a little bit better doing it this way. All right, so what we get, what we, what we doing here? All right, so we're gonna put out a pompano rig first. See if we can catch some pompano. Maybe a ladyfish or a hardtail or something that we could use for some shark bait. So we're gonna start with some fresh dead shrimp here. We just got a pompano rig. So what makes it a pompano rig? That's what I've been trying to figure out. It's just a double drop rig with a float on it. Okay. That's just what so this it keeps it, there. you know, kind of alive in the water column. That's, yeah, it keeps yeah. it off the bottom. Rather, too. yeah, I see what you're Try saying. Try to help crabs from getting it. Right. So we'll just thread Check on. that bad boy out. That's called a Sputnik weight. So when it's a little bit windier and rougher, use this, and these will go down in the sand. And then if you get a fish, these prongs oh, actually pop wow. loose, come out of the sand, you can reel it in nice Holy and easy. Holy cow! I love to see specialized gear. Like right. That's awesome. We're also going to use some fish bites. So this is a synthetic bait that releases scent in the water. Ah. So we cut off just a little piece, just like so. And then we tip this shrimp with the fish bites. So that's our presentation there. All right, so yeah, you get the naturalness of the shrimp, but also the increased oils and scent in the water from the fish bites. Absolutely. And if the shrimp does get eaten off, that uh, fish bites is gonna stay on there, so you I still gotcha. got a bait. Yeah, awesome. How tall is that rod? This is 11 foot. Wow. 11 foot One rod. piece? Uh, two piece. Oh, okay. Piece, two piece. Wow. A lot of people will get tricked by the waves. So this rod, you're gonna see it bounce a little bit, moving around. But when we get a fish, it's either gonna double over, which you'll really know, or it's gonna go really fast. And a lot of times, Pompano will hit and swim at the beach. And so that line will actually go slack. Oh, uh, yeah. But usually the waves are gonna be a little more rhythmic. So that rod. Yeah, I see it doing it. that part now where it's. So that's just gonna be yeah. the wave action. But Interesting. You'll know when you get a fish. Yeah, back. no doubt. Cool, man. All right, that doesn't look like a pompano rig. This is not a pompano rig. So we are gonna throw out a shark rig with the mullet that you brought while we wait to see if we can catch some fresh bait. We got a 12 aught circle hook here. Go ahead and hook this up. Right up through the lips. You want as much exposed hook as possible when you're shark fishing. Okay. And then we got some wire leader. This is 49 strand cable uh-huh and then this goes up to a weight now this weight can slide on this mono oh. so when the weight's down when the shark picks it up he's gonna be able to take that bait without feeling the resistance right they feel the resistance they they're resistant shy yep. yeah it's funny how a lot of fish are like that for sure and then this is 400 pound mono wow a little heavy but uh we got probably four to five foot of it and that's gonna help uh you got this for the bite leader, but the mono, those sharks, their skin is like sandpaper. And so if, you, if their skin hits that braid, and mm. the tail hits the braid, they'll just cut it right off. So this is more like a shock leader, try to help keep them from breaking yeah. off on their skin. Now does this whole setup come just like that? You can yep. buy it, yeah. Yep. So you can buy this all the way and then you just tie it straight on your braid. Oh, it even comes with the hook. Hook and everything, okay. ready to go. All you need is a weight. And y'all have this at the shop? Yes. Awesome. Yep. Right, it's nope, a circle hook? Okay. All right, folks, we got a fish on. Don't know what it is. So he's swimming in, so just reel in quick. Okay. All right. Let's get that rod tip up. There he is. Do you see him up? up? He's on the top. There he goes. Now he knows he's hooked. Now he knows he's hooked. Now he knows he's hooked. Oh, we a little a shark. shark! Yeah! <laughs> we shark it, baby! Yes, yes, indeed! All right! Wow! That's not How about really that? Expected. Now, what kind of shark is that? So, I am terrible with my shark species. Okay. I don't do a lot. This is probably... I don't think it's a baby black tip. Okay. Uh, I think they're uh, a sharp nose. Oh. I think they're some of the small ones. Okay. 
Honestly, don't know. Don't quote me on yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, cool. If you don't mind, open the bell. Okay. Let me see. Touch them, hold them, talk about them. Anything. That particular one. All right, y'all. That's catch number one. I'm sure he would bite your finger off if you let him. Don't let him fool you. I don't know if he'd take it, but he'd make it yeah. not feel too good. Touch him. You want to touch you him? Touch, touch his tail. I don't want you to get your finger bit. Feels like sandpaper, huh? Ooh, he's strong. Golly. Just a big old muscle. The smaller the shark, the more dangerous Right? Are, All right. Nice release. <laughs> First shark. All right, we got a shot, no, baby. Not exactly how I thought it was right? going to start, but we got one. We got one. All right, let me get you a shrimp. You just need a little piece, huh? Yep. All right. Hang on, buddy. <laughs> First ever stand is crap. By yourself, we're doing everything. Uh, so it looks like a shark. It's not. Good catch, dude. <laughs> yeah. Kelton's first ever Spanish mackerel. Really cool catch. I'm to try to catch another one. All right. Hey, load, load it up, bro. Hey, we'll make two trips. That's all right. We're going to load the ice chest with them Spanish mackerel. You got it. You just did it by yourself. Good job, man. All right, we ain't going hungry. All right. oh, there we go. That might not be a shark, huh, bro? That might not be a shark. That might not be a shark. Oh, come on. I don't know. I'm not feeling him. Uh, don't tell me it came off. Uh, am I feeling him? No, I'm not feeling him, bro. Should we, should we have left it longer? No. No. It could have been a Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Maybe I'm speaking too soon. Let me see. Sometimes those pompano hit and swim yeah. in. And so yeah, yeah. He could have. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling him now. Could be like a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on there. Oh, yeah. He's on there. We got a fish. We got something. Coming up to the beach right here. It is a hard tail. Hard tail. No. Oh, hard head. Is that food? <laughs> you can do it just with a little hard tail. With a little hard tail? Nah, we'll let him go. Oh, look at that rod bend, boy. There he goes. That dude's gonna be a beast. Oh, it is a shark. They back. They came back. Where's your daddy? We need daddy shark. All right, come on. Don't be a shark. Don't be a shark. He's on top. That's probably not good. It is another baby shark. A black nose. Hey, we found the Black Nose Nursery today, That's boys. Right. We found where the mama dropped them off at the nursery, and we found it today. This is a frisky little dude. I know it's almost like she just had them, and they're like, yeah, right. <laughs> fresh out the belly. Uh oh. This might be a poppin' out. He, oh, he's got, he's hooked up. He's hooked you up. <laughs> Just get him in, we'll come. What you got, buddy? Another Spanish, a big Spanish. Nice, dude, that's a Spanish. Hey, let me see, now. You holding him? Oh, got him. Nice. Kelton's crushing it. Throwing that spoon. Don't let him bite your finger now. All right, sweet. Um, Aaron, cool. You want to save that one? Yeah. To do it. Yeah, just in case. Sort of catching yeah. could be good enough. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We got something to eat. My man over here is catching them all, huh?
All right, folks, well, it's still fishing no matter where you are. We weren't able to ever hook up with anything big, but had a great time. Got to hang out with Bearded Brad. Go see him on YouTube. Bearded Brad is the name of the channel. I'll put, you know, I'll, you'll see that throughout the video, Bearded Brad. Go see him on YouTube. He's also on Facebook. So if you're big into Facebook, go check him out there. You can see clips, kind of follow along what they do. Go check out their store because it's a cool place. I've got one more thing I can do to try to get something else to cook and involve some lights and a flat fish that likes to hang out on a beach like this. So it ain't over yet. Let me go get them lights and get started. All right, y'all. First night in Alabama. We've already been on the dock making some casts, but y'all know I love flounder. I haven't been able to gig them in quite some time. Tide is just starting to come up, so we've got a fairly low tide right now. Uh, really just hoping we'll get a few, get the night started. Let's go see. Another needlefish. He might, I don't know if he'll keep. Oh yeah, he's tiny, he's huh? Yeah, yeah, let's not take any chances. You want me to spook him? Yeah, 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 let him see it. Look guys, here's one. Oh Lord, all right, go ahead. There that was goes. a little guy, we gotta let him go. They have to be 14, but we're finding them, which is good, which is real good. He looks a little small. Yeah, he's a little guy, but... Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Look at him. I see him, folks. He just sunk himself down. All right, here. There he there goes. He goes. <laughs> That's cool, man. Fun stuff, y'all. You got one, really? Yeah, we got one. What's we... an average night? Two. Yeah. <laughs> this right. year and last fall have been the hottest I've seen it in my life. Heck yeah. But like the best. The most number. We've, we've seen 10 number. tonight. Yeah. We've seen 10. Tiny. Yeah. We've seen yeah, two we, small ones. Well, and... we saw a total. Three total? Yeah. yeah. Three or four total. They're in like this thigh deep water. Right when it starts to deepen up. Where did y'all start at? We started right behind by... you. Yeah, right behind y'all. Oh, okay, so y'all been walking. We just followed y'all. Okay. All right. But All right. more will come the later it gets. Yeah, you so bet. You guys got rods out right there, so we stopped and turned around. Oh, okay. Alright, we'll just head back that way. There's a, there's a two foot shark over here somewhere swimming. Oh, cool. So just oh. watch out for Yeah, that. for sure. Well, Appreciate the heads up. Right yeah, we've seen quite You bet, man. Y'all be safe, be man. Heck yeah. Nice. That's a good one, man. Heck yeah. Five's one there. What's this? What's this thing? The big one. Yeah. Jim. <laughs> what is that? Another one? Man, we in them, huh? Look at that. There's... What is that right in front of us? Another one? Damn. Two ways. Two of them swimming together. We need to go. Oh, God. Look how far from the beach we are. I think there's another one right here. Right? Yeah. All right, folks, we got a little bit turned around. We're way off the beach. We're gonna try to get back without running into a stingray. I'm kind of surrounded by him right now. Let's walk up on this trough. Okay. And then we'll walk around. Yeah, just back there. Yeah. I just hit something. Huh? I just hit something with my gig and it freaking shot off. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. What you think? Yeah, I think you're good. Oh! Got him! <laughs> right, I'm gonna get him to the beach, okay? Alright. Let me make sure I got him good. I don't know if I got him that good. Hey, you come put another one in it. Put another one in it. You can't afford to lose Let me see him. Got him? Yeah. Got him. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, folks. <laughs> Hard work pays off sometimes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Wow. Look at that sucker. That's a nice one. That is a good one. Good little floundy. All right, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. We gotta get him on. Okay, I'll hold. 
да. Appreciate Got my boy Chaz here. Got some homies walking the beach. What's up, homies walking the beach? We got our first flounder of the night. We've been walking, y'all. He was close. He, he was, was up tight. Chaz spotted him. We're gonna put him on a stringer. That's it, bro. There he is. Flounder for dinner, baby. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, y'all, welcome back. We are way outside them levees tonight. We are over here in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I'm hanging out with my buddy, Chaz Stennett. We're on a little bit of a abbreviated family vacation, and I knew I wanted to come flounder gigging. Y'all been asking for it, so here it is. I'm excited to be doing it. <laughs> Dude, I'm happy now. <laughs> I said, put two in him. I wasn't taking no chances. That's awesome. All right, bro. All right, y'all got them fish cleaned up. We are back home. I was gonna cook at the camp and we kind of ran short on time. So we're back here. I'm gonna show you something quick and easy that you can do if you do take a Gulf Shores vacation and catch you some fish. This would be a great one to do for the whole family. We got the Spanish mackerel, we got the flounder, and let me show you how to get them seasoned up. Now the kicker to this dish is something real easy. Just this McCormick pesto sauce right here. You just need to pick up a pack of that either at the grocery while you're out there in Gulf Shores or before you go, just make sure you have this. You might wanna get a couple packs of it in case you happen to get a bunch of fish or if you got a bunch of people to feed. Let's get into it. All right, so all you're gonna really need here is a light seasoning to go ahead and sear this fish. I've got some garlic uh, powder, some Italian seasoning, some salt and some pepper, really simple. Um, a lot of your flavor is going to come from the pesto sauce. This is just to make sure that you get some extra seasoning and it's not bland. Okay, and flip it over and do it again. All right, and heat up your pan to about a medium and add some olive oil. Add your fish in. Work it around good. That fish is gonna wanna stick. You could add some more oil. Also turn your heat down if it's uh, sticking too bad and just take your time with it. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more just so I'm not sticking. And there we go. All right, and once you start to see where it's turning mostly white, go ahead and flip. And that's it right there. All right, once your pasta is done, go ahead and add about two thirds of your pesto to it and start mixing that up, turning it into pesto pasta. Just wanna save just enough to be able to top your fish with. And that's what you're looking for right there. All right, put your pasta out on the plate, top it with some of that delicious fish and finish it with some of your pesto. That's it, voila. All right, y'all, how about that for a little vacation meal? Uh, man, the Gulf Coast like that, the Emerald Gulf Coast is so loaded with little VRBOs, uh, places you can rent, little houses. Get out there, get the family, enjoy the beach, book you a fishing trip, get your hands dirty, get to fishing, and cook up something like this for everyone where you're enjoying that beautiful Gulf Coast, the sandy beaches. Man, we are so blessed with everything we have here on the Gulf Coast. Now I got to try it out. Mm. absolutely perfect quick and easy is the way to do it when you're on those vacations shout out to bearded brad thanks for taking me to the beach love hanging out with your boys go see them if you do head down to gulf shores orange beach they got that really cool shop they'll get you set up to go fishing if you like what we do if you like this kind of thing the catch and cooks go ahead and subscribe now and we'll see you next time Alright y'all, I just found some shrimp on the ground. Somebody left shrimp from yesterday. I'll go ahead and get started with this. It's a little rough, but it should be good enough to catch with. Yeah, that'll catch. Oh yeah, that'll catch some old redfish. So it's cold, not as cold as it probably was yesterday, but it's cold. 
You see the boats are already showing up. They're ready to catch. We'll see. All right, set that one down. All right, go get my coffee. While the shrimp is down there fishing for me, I'm gonna go ahead and fish with a plastic two, three eighths ounce jig head. Little uh, plastic here, plastic cockahoe minnow. And I'm gonna bounce that on the bottom, see if I can pick some up doing that. Finally. Jeez. All right. Whew, that was a long wait, y'all. A long wait. There's probably 15 of us fishing here. I've seen about eight fish get caught. But maybe they're moving through. All right, well, uh, not ideal. I know there was a really good redfish bite here yesterday. The tide has now come up, and I don't think the amount of fish that, well, in fact, I know the amount of fish that were here yesterday aren't here today. So the question for me as a YouTuber whose job it is to create content and to create videos from beginning to end, what do I do next? So I think the best thing that I can do for you guys, for my audience, is to let you see the realistic process that's about to happen. So I caught one fish. I, you know, there's times when I can make a video based on one fish. I don't think this is one of those days where I could just catch that one fish and then go home. So we're just gonna we're just gonna hit the streets. I'm gonna go take a ride, see if they're catching fish anywhere else. Honestly, I'm just gonna take y'all along on the day in the life of what I do. All right, so I just got to uh, a second spot. So I left Hopedale, Louisiana. Now I'm headed towards Delacroix. I'm just past Regio, Louisiana. Hopefully some tide movement. I know the tide's starting to really stop running, but I'm gonna try to get out there and catch a few more. Yeah, that's a big boy. Oh, he's going on my line. All right, we good. Yeah. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's see. Man, I ain't got no grabbers with me. Yeah, let him down now. I'll get him. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Oh, he took it. Huh? It looked like you barely knew he was hooked. Oh, they like, they like that when it's cold. You like, like a crab. Oh, yeah, you got it, honey. It's kind of rigging. I've always done that with a net. There you go. Thank you, man. Thank you, bud. Let's see yes, if I can indeed. get the, that hook on them. Cycle hook. They're easy to you get out. Nice chest or basket? They're easy to get out, but yeah. many times you miss. When doing the videos, too, I don't get to hunt as much as I used to, you know, because. Today, I'm like, okay, this would be something worth making a video on. Like, so I chose to do this on the day where I might normally have chosen to hunt, you know? Yeah. So I had to, I have to give up some of my hunt today to, to be able to do this. I know it's got to be pretty tough to have one video every week. Shh. This oh. week, I'm trying to do two. Three? Right, two. But Rob said, Rob said to try and do at least six a month at least oh, yeah. at the very least yeah and some months i can do that some months i can't really i'm gonna tell you what hurt me this month and you know last month too was just 
go hunting, go hunting, go hunting, and you don't get nothing, you don't see nothing, you know. Right. So that's really what kind of messed me up. out the other side and I'm behind and I could see the whole thing Jeez. I said oh I thought he was gonna kill that woman it was a woman yeah it was kill Barney I mean he come over he drug her like this in he spit out on the other side she was up against a the fence there born I stopped and I called call man man you just hit a car did yeah yeah I said man you what you what right in front of me oh man so he stopped you know and I stopped behind him, I put my flashes on and all that, you know. Yeah. Went to see the woman, she was all in shock and everything. I guess she called the cops. Here come the cops. There he is. And the cops. There he is. Wait your line. I'm going to bring him up the rocks. All right. There you go. That's a good keeper. That's a good little keeper. Yeah, that's a keeper. Yes, indeed. Got us another one, y'all. Another one. Tio with the fish. Good Tio, boy. That was fun. Tell the world hello, Tio. Hello there. As they say in Spanish, esto sí que es fun. <laughs> this is fun. We're going to have to measure this one. <laughs> yeah, I, gotta, I think he's going to make it. I believe he'll make I it. I got to stick there with a measurement on. Okay. Let's head over there. Works oh. for me. All right, folks, we just got back to Uncle Wimpy's. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful day. Sunshine, not too cold. Caught some redfish. It wasn't, you know, hot every bite, you know, every cast, but we had a good time, man. It's, it's a nice day when you can sit there on the roadside and catch a fish like that. That's what it's all about. That day happens, your life as you, as you knew it is over. Yeah. Kids, your life as you knew it's gone, it's over. All right, tell us what we're going to make with these fish we just caught. Okay, cooked. I'm going to attempt to uh, make a couple of fish burgers. Put them on uh, burger buns, really. And uh, she's doing something kind of quick with some Everglades. Put Everglades season on it, garlic butter, and uh, vegetable oil. Show them that yeah. garlic butter you use. This is garlic butter right here. The garlic spread. Get the, get the little cap off here. Right here, you see? Just take a little bit of that. I already put some in there, so I'm gonna just put a little bit more. That's garlic butter. I'm gonna leave it open in case I wanna get some more of it. Now, nah. I'll put Everglades on one side, and I'm gonna put a little Everglades on there. Let me load up on it a little bit. Hey, hey, I'm filming. Hey, I'm filming. Can you, yeah, kind of keep it quiet then. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Uh, put a little Everglades on both sides. If I, can, I don't want to put too much because Everglades has a lot of salt in it. So I'm going to just put a little bit of it on all this like this. Just about that much like deer meat for dinner would say about that much all right and about that much i think that's enough so and then what's on the board here got my pan hot i don't know what the temperature is but anyway i'll play it by ear and so get these thick pieces and we'll make burgers on. let's see let's see if it's good all right, this sizzling a little bit, so it ought to be warm enough. It should be a little hotter. I'm gonna put it up a little bit. All right. That's about it. It's something quicky, you know. Uh, so I don't use no salt on this here because the Everglades has a lot of salt in it. Right. So I might use a little bit of, a little bit more Everglades. All right. Might 
I use white pepper because uh, my body don't agree with black pepper. But white pepper, you can di digest white pepper. With black pepper, you, you don't digest. Show us what you got, huh? I got some Hargate cheese a friend of mine uh, mm -hmm. made. Oh, my goodness. Hargate, heavy on the head. <laughs> All right, y'all know I love hogshead cheese. Y'all seen me eat it before. Mm. But this is homemade. Mm. Y'all know what to do now. Leave me a comment. Would you eat hogshead cheese? Would you eat it from the hogshead? Would you do it? Let me know. Uh, that's that hog cheese bread, man. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. Oh, man. You got the real one there. Check that out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't wear that in every day. Yeah, right, right. I just put it over there. And... Okay, let me get back to these burgers. There you go. Let's get them finished. Uh, okay, this is the bottom of the bun. Put the mayonnaise on the bottom of the bun. I always put the lettuce on the mayonnaise first. Gives it a better taste. The lettuce is a better taste and all that. You put it on the mayonnaise, okay? When I was a kid, I used to eat lettuce sandwiches <laughs> with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise and lettuce, that was it. Next thing, you put the tomato. I, I, I wash my hands, don't worry about it. <laughs> and you put a tomato on there. All right, now comes the good stuff. Uh, okay, right there. Okay, that's it. Now, you gonna eat one? Uh, hell yeah, I'm gonna eat one. All right. What I'm you gonna... got? I heard a pop. What we got? got some wine. I got that Canary Island Lounge. Oh, no. wine. oh man. <laughs> Gotta um, test it out. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me test it. Okay. So, so tell them the significance of the Canary Islands for us. What does that mean? That wine's from the Canary Islands. Canary Islands is where our ancestors, uh, we are descendants of the Canary Island people that were brought to Louisiana to colonize Louisiana and uh, protect New Orleans from the British expansion. And we settled here in uh, 1778 through 1782. And some of them came via Cuba, they went from the Canary Islands, stopped in Cuba to resupply and then came here. Uh, but most of them all, it was uh, four villages, you know. But anyway, the significance of the Canary Islands that we are descendants of the Canary Islands. So we're not Cajun? No, we're not Cajun. Mm -hmm. Hablo espanol, no hablo francés. Nada de francés, nada más que español. Hey, some days you don't even need a boat. You go hang out on the side of the road and things just happen. Let me try it out. Perfect amount of Everglades on it. Yeah, it came out real good. Mm, mm. Oh my goodness, y'all surprised me. I thought it was, you know, I didn't know how good it was gonna come out, but it did come out good. And now the Canary Island wine, this is for y'all. Here's a toast to you. Thank you for watching. Salud, amor y pesetas, y el tiempo para gastarla con amigo. Alright, you know what to do now. Like the video. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Do you like these videos that we're doing? Would you try the hogshead cheese? Do you want to try the Canary Island wine? And we'll see y'all next time. <laughs> Welcome back to Outside the Levees. I'm your host, Jared Cerny, and today we are targeting a prehistoric, big old nasty alligator garfish. That's right. We've got some uh, river water here pouring from the Mississippi River into the marsh. We see garfish rolling everywhere right now. We got some bait, and uh, we're going to give this a try. Vinny, my boy Vinny with Pelican Bone Outdoors, go check his channel out. Good old boy, he's been trying to catch one. I've been wanting to catch one, so here we are. Let's show you all the setup. All right, folks, I've got my big rod today. This is a battle cat by Akuma. It's just a big, beefy rod for catching trophy catfish. It's a 7.6 heavy. I've got 80 pound braid on there, big old 6500 series reel. And then what I did was I took some black tarred line, 
This is like 300 pound test black card line and I got it on a float here. And then for my hook, I just went with a number six, six aught O'Shaughnessy hook. Nice sharp long shank hook. And what I wanna try is going with a skipjack, a whole skipjack. I tried to keep them alive, but they're not very, they're not very durable. So we're gonna hook a skipjack up and let him float. See if we can get an interested garfish. All right. Like so. Okay. I've had a lot of success in here catching garfish on jug lines using a pretty similar setup. So I'm hoping the same setup will work for rod and reel. All right. Go ahead and loosen my drag real good. I don't want him to feel it. Okay. Let that out there. Let's do another one. All right, y'all, I got a taker on this one here now. It's taking it good. He's taking it good. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just gonna let him have it. Let me tighten my drag. That way when I do get ready, we can get to fighting, hopefully. Now in my experience with the jug lines, this is not long enough. Like on a jug line, you want like we would them, they would have that jug for like ten minutes, bro, and you'd go pull a jug and they still let it go. So I don't even see the cork no more though. Oh, he got it on though. That's good though. We'll let him just enjoy it. Let him have it. what it is man I don't know what it is it ain't big ah uh, oh. uh, I couldn't tell you see one. though uh it wasn't a big one anyway I couldn't tell if it was a gar it was a gar all right y'all he's taking my green one I don't know if I want to roll in my reel in my other one yet He's taking a lot of line, folks. No? I'm freaking tangled him up. Completely not the direction I thought it was. There he is. Got him. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, come on. Don't let it go. Oh, it's, that wasn't long enough. It was a big one, bro. Uh, all right, but we got him figured out. That's all right. All right, y'all, Vinny's actually getting a good bit of line taken. We're being good boys, and we're not setting the hook yet. It's so hard to be patient, but they really got such a hard mouth. You know, you really need them to start getting it down. I'm going to have to set Yeah, you're going to have to. Line. You're going to have to. All right, we'll just set the crap out of it, see what you can do. You know, like you said, you don't want to run out of line. Come on, Vin. Come on, Vinny. Come on, Vinny. Come on, Vinny. Oh, what kind of set was that? <laughs> What kind of set was I don't that? Know what, he's on. <laughs> what kind of set? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's still on. Oh, huh? he's still on. There's something on. He's swimming right at me though. You feel him yet? Yeah, you know, I don't know if he knows he's hooked. But there's weight on there. Look at that rod, man. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh. Hey, we start with a little one if we got to, Vinny. We just need to get one in the boat. We'll start oh. with a little one if we got to. What you got? Big oh, Vinny got him a garfish. Let me get him a net. Let me get Vinny a net. Oh, right. somebody was right about the circle hook. All right, bro. Heck yeah. Okay. Oh my God, he ain't little. No. I bet the alligator tried to take a chunk of something. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, get in the boat. There we go. Uh, come over here with that noise, dude. He's got a Ooh. big old gash out of him, huh? Look at that. My man got him his long nose. Oh. Got him a long nose. Oh, yeah, I bumped, uh, bumped the camera. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah it's like know. once he had it, he had it, bro. Yes, and like you indeed. said, you were out of line. You couldn't really give him anything yeah. more. So, nice. all right. Dude, I mean, he's almost, look at that. I know. Chunk of meat taken out of there. crazy. Yeah, he didn't take no time. He just started moving. All right, y'all got one taking it now. I'm going to just wait a little bit longer. Let me take some more. Tell you what, let me 
Roll, reel this other one in. Hold yeah, that. Hold I'm going to reel this other one in real quick. That way, once if I do start fighting the fish, this doesn't become an issue. All right, y'all. I've let him take it a good bit. I don't know, folks. Let's just set the hook in the name of trial and error. Whoa, whatever the hook's at there, cuz. I got you. Oh, I think he's hooked. <laughs> See if you can hook me back up, then. See if you can hook me back up, brother. Oh, he's taking. Oh boy. What you want me to do? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. No. Oh. No. Oh. Oh, oh bro. <laughs> Dude, look, look how, how far it is. Look how far he was. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Oh, and another bag. And Leroy's back. We'd have chased him down with the boat. God. Dun. That's funny. Dang it, Ben. Cool. Stay in here. All right, folks, I just threw into a fish. Like, casted it out, turned around, look, my cork was under. Uh, got my bail open. He's not really pulling. Whoo, he's taking it, bro. This guy's taking it. Oh. All right, y'all, I have to try him. I don't know why, but drag. I don't know. I tightened it. He's on. <laughs> ah! Come on, fish! <sighs> Come on, fish, stay on. God, he's big. Dude, I have my drag tightened. What I can do? I don't know what else to do. Ah, he's big, bro. God, I'm off fish. Oh no. Come off, fish. Don't come off. Please don't come off. Please don't come off. There he goes. Right. I don't know how we're going to get him in, Vinny. Are we going to do the rope or a net? Okay, you got to come up over my rod, right? Oh, I don't want this fish to come off, Vinny. I do not want this fish to come off. He's going to freak out when he sees the boat. All right, so do, do we do we do that now? Oh uh, no, wait till he gets a little bit closer. Okay. Don't worry, Dad's gonna watch this video. He's gonna tell us all the things we did wrong. <laughs> all right, I got him right here. Yeah. Let's see if he makes another big run. Oh, look at the <sighs> size of that dude! Come on now, don't make no more big runs. No big runs. Yeah, if, yeah, if you get a sec, just slot it through, and I'll, right. I'll hold it loose until we get him close. Okay. <sighs> do we need a? I don't want him getting in that motor. Yeah, no, just just go ahead and crank them like you're doing, and, and I will. Uh, okay. I don't want it to touch the line until we actually. I know. Oh, my, my, mine's, mine's, mine's going. going. Mine's rolling? Yeah, mine's rolling. Mine's rolling. Okay. Oh. Oh. Holy smokes. He's got to be. Yo! Yeah, I don't think he's coming off, no. God, listen to he's it burn. The boat. Listen to it burn. He's seen the boat, bro. He said, no, sir, not today. That's that big one we've been watching. Oh, dude. yeah. That's got to be that big one we've been watching. I wonder how long it takes to get them worn down, too. I imagine a while, man. Them things are dinosaurs. Right. You could leave that sucker in the boat for a day and a half and he'd still be alive. God. Yeah, if we can. He looks up. Oh, yeah, he's. He looks up. Oh. Oh. You sure your GoPro's rolling? Yes, it is. I'm watching okay. it. No! He oh, dude, he cut, cut your line, bro. He actually cut it. I'll oh. take that. I'll take a cut. Because that's an equipment oh, bro. adjustment I can... Uh, that one's moving. That one's moving. That one's moving. <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, yeah. You on there? No. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So he was able to cut my tarred line. Um, This came recommended. You know, like most folks, I figured, hey, you need to use a uh, steel leader. And 
I don't know. You know, the, the, the guy who uses this, maybe he uses a little bit less drag or who knows, you know, but uh, we're getting closer. Y'all saw the size of that one. So we know where they are. We know how to get them on. Now we got to figure out how to land them. All right, y'all, well, we couldn't leave it like that. We lost that big one right at the boat. Uh, we came back, we're right back here. We got what we need this time, made a little bit of an equipment change. You know, sometimes that's the great thing about living down here in Louisiana. We've got so many folks who do so many different, wonderful things in the outdoors, and we're able to talk to all of them. So one of them recommended that line, and that's a great line to use. It just happened to get cut, right? So now I want to increase my chances of catching. So I've made an equipment change. I went to hook and line, got what I need. We are rigged up. Vinny's here again. He's ready. That man's ready, We're bro. We're getting him, Carl. That man's We're ready. We're getting him. He's ready. He was able to land one. Now his goal is to upgrade. Mine is to get a big one in the boat. So we're going to get these baits out here and get right back to them. All right, y'all, here's the setup. So we got the boat perpendicular to where the current is running. Current's going that way. And your fish seem to be rolling all here in the middle. You see, we're seeing big fish roll just like we were the other day. So we're casting, right? And then letting the float drift. We're watching them as they float on by. And then like that one's getting a bite there. I th believe it is. So they, they eventually come here. But I think we'd really need to concentrate here on the middle because that's where the bites came from the other day. But this one's definitely getting something to play with it. Don't look like a garfish just yet. I'm gonna wait till I see it running. Woo. Ooh, big one just rolled. That one's starting to move a little bit now. Uh -oh, oh, oh. Well, folks, like everything we try to do, we're dealing with alligators, pesky alligators. Getting wrapped up in our fishing line, messing with our stuff. You know, we keep trying to tell wildlife we think they're overpopulated. They won't address our concerns. So this is what we live with. Alligators everywhere, everything we try to do. All right, y'all, got another one. This one's down, which is good. It's been a while since we've had one really go down, which is what you want to see. That means they actually have it. But he's not peeling line either, so. Not at all, this is going. I'm kind of nervous to do anything at this point. Sitting on it. Yeah, like he grabbed it and took it down. If I feel, if, if I, I don't know. He's not doing anything. But there it is. Oh, it came up. He still got it. He okay. Does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cool. need, to, I need to get some slack out at this point. I'm gonna let him pull the slack out. All right, I think he got it now. All right, y'all, let's give it a whack. It's <laughs> so awkward. Set that target. There we go. He ain't big, but oh, we got one. Out. He ain't little either, though. You want me to hook him? Or? Yeah, gaff him. Gaff him. We gotta gaff him. I'm gonna let Vinny gaff. Oh, Ooh. don't don't throw my hook. Don't throw my hook. All right, Vin. He's hooked good, man. He's hooked good, Vin. Oh, Terrible. there you go. Got Vinny got him. Oh. All right, I'm, folks. That's my first gaff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some, brother. Yes. That is a good little eating size too. That's a perfect eater there. Whoo, man, we work for this, oh, brother. Here we go. Let's go. Woo! All right, uh, open up the ice chest. Yep. 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 And gaff him, get gaff him right back into the ice chest. Yeah. I don't... All right, folks. That's that little monster. Not a big giant like I had on, but honestly, this is what I'd rather eat anyway. A little bit less work to clean. And those big ones, they only get bigger. So this guy would take a lot longer to get bigger, turn into a big monster. Woo! 
He's still heavy though. That's not a light fish by any means. He's gonna be good in the pot. We don't know what we're cooking yet, but we're cooking something with him. Thank y'all for being here. I appreciate you. All right, y'all, we finally got a good take. It went boom, 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 and now it's under. Say a prayer for my boy Vinny, y'all. He's trying to get one so bad. Nope. Oh, you went right to the set? <laughs> yeah, I told oh, you. Oh, bro. No, he still got it. He's still on it. What? Yeah. I don't know why, but it's back under again. Let's see if he good takes it and run. I mean, if he's got it under, bro, that's all I did on my la my fish I caught. I really didn't wait that terribly long. They said they said 30 seconds. And don't take pressure off, period. Never take pressure off. Set. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Don't take no pressure off that fish. There you go. Get you some hook sets, Vin. Get them, Vin. Y'all say a prayer for Vin, folks. Say a prayer for this man. He's out here working, oh, trying to get this fish. You got your GoPro rolling? Oh, yes, brother. All right. I don't care if he's he gets coming. tangled up. We'll deal with that later. Oh, no, he's coming loose. Come on. He's, getting, he's coming straight All forward. Right, let, me the, let me get the gas. Oh, big boy. Big boy. Uh, All right, you're rolling, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, he's going well, to wanna... be kind of crazy when he comes in there. I can't. See, I'm not really. Yeah, just drag him in and step out the way. There you go. He's in. Right. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get his head away from you. <laughs> All right, I'm good. All right. Woo! Oh. <laughs> yeah! Y'all. There we go. Woo! In the nick of time, too, folks. So. All, All right. right. Let's get him in the ice chest, and then we'll get the hook out. Yeah. Let me get that. Uh, where's that guy? You ready? Yep. Just get him to the ice chest and we'll deal with everything else later. There you go, brother. Woo! Alright, y'all. There's that beautiful garfish meat. Not super hard to clean at all. I just get 10 snips, go right down the back, slice the rest out with a fillet knife. No big deal. People overreact to how hard these fish are to clean. I cleaned both of them. Not a big deal. So there it is. We're actually gonna cook a garfish curry. Y'all know me, I like to break outside of those traditional dishes that people typically use when they cook things. So we're gonna try it in a curry. So let's get right into it. All right, so I got me a half a stick of butter melted. I'm gonna add some chopped onion and red bell pepper. Start cooking that down. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with some fresh garlic. That's uh, about a tablespoon and a half right there. All right, once that cooked down for a while, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in some of my curry powder. All right, once you have that, that's uh, that's about probably two teaspoons right there. Go ahead and mix it up a little bit, see what you got. You want it to be a nice, pretty yellow color. And then I'll start adding some chicken stock to that. Let that come up. And we'll add a little bit more curry powder. Okay, it's about another teaspoon and a little bit more stock. Okay, stir it up. All right, now we wanna go ahead and add a thing of coconut milk. Stir that up. Your consistency here should be that of about gumbo. You want it fairly thick. And once I get that for, I want to go ahead and add some salt. Some ground ginger. Some cumin. Paprika. A little bit of cinnamon. And some black pepper. And mix that up. And at this point, you'll just have to do a taste test. All right, folks, and then once you get everything to how you want it to taste, go ahead and set your garfish meat in. Reminds me of cooking a cuvillon, very similar. Keep that heat up for this. Because what you're gonna wanna do is have that come up to a, a low boil and then turn down to a simmer. So your heat needs to be up when you're dropping that cold fish in. 
All right, y'all, and once you get it to a low boil, go ahead and cover it up. I'm gonna turn my heat down to a medium low and just let that cook for at least an hour. We'll check it in an hour. All right, y'all, look at that delicious garfish curry. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We made some rice. We gotta get that in a bowl and get to eating. Look at that, boy. Got it topped off with some cilantro. Mm -mm -mm. All right, folks, there it is. Look at that. Never thought you could do curry with garfish, did you? Did you? Mm -mm -mm. Gotta try it out. Oh my goodness. Letting it cook for about two hours. Got it good and tender. Garfish is a pretty tough meat. Like most meats that are tough, you just let them cook low and slow. No big deal. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If you like the gar fishing, go ahead and let me know now. I'm down to do more of it. I enjoy it. Such a fun thing to do. Got plenty of them, that's for sure. Appreciate y'all so much. Thanks for being with me. Go check out my buddy Vinny from Pelican Bone Outdoors. He's the man. Super funny, really interesting guy from down here in Louisiana. Please go subscribe to his channel. Help him grow because you know it ain't easy. We'll see y'all soon.